always beware of buying vehicles from other YouTubers. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Flip That Truck. This will be our third truck of the season. And if you're not familiar with what the idea for this series is, is that I started with a fairly inexpensive vehicle, did a little bit here or there, what I could do or found a good deal, tried to spy, sell, trade my way up, being very clear and straightforward with what I had, what I did, and what I'm selling it for. Now, this time I bought a vehicle from a fellow YouTuber. Now I'm not gonna name that YouTuber specifically, but the truck did finally make it here after its long trip from Canada. And I haven't opened the box yet. This is how it came. We're going to get in here. All right, inside. We, for no reason whatsoever, have um, some Scale Builder Guild decals. Merely a coincidence. Packing peanuts, which are my favorite. And a very well, what appears to be bubble wrapped vehicle. Next layer. This seems like an excessive amount of bubble wrap. All right. So here is our next project. This is an Axial SCX-10 2-based vehicle that Matt from the Scale Builders Guild originally built. Now I will say that I got a really good deal on this car and that's not because Matt wants to see me make a profit. It's just always easier to beat up your friends on price than anybody else. So let's go over the details of everything that we have and don't have with this build. So we have a goodie bag behind this spare wheel that I can't get out without removing the tire it seems. We'll go over all of that shortly. Now I couldn't tell a lot of the details about this truck uh, from the photos and information that Matt had given me, but it was enough for me to know and see and understand that it was going to be a good deal for me. Now, the biggest thing is, is that it is an Axial SCX-10 2 platform, which opens up a ton of options, especially for finding parts on the cheap because there's a huge amount of aftermarket. And that means that there's also a lot of used aftermarket available as well. The big thing is though, is that this thing already has Vanquish Curry Rock Jocks underneath of it. So big plus for sure. Those definitely add a lot of value. Now, the bigger thing is, is what this truck doesn't have. So he showed it to me basically as it's seen here, and that is with no wheels or tires, no shocks, no drive shafts. But I kind of negotiated with him a little bit on that and made him find me some stock drive shafts and some shocks for it. So by the time we were done, he said he had found the drive shafts, which I see some stock axial wild bores in there, which is perfect. And the incision shocks that were on here. So we've got shocks and drive shafts covered, which is good because those are a couple of big chunks. Now, the other thing is, is that this doesn't have a transmission, but Luckily, in the last flip that truck, we had installed that Element Enduro transmission, which left us with a stock transmission to use. So that's perfect. However, this does have an SCX-10 2 kit style skid plate in it. So we're gonna have to swap out that skid plate for a standard three gear style transmission. No big deal though. Now we also have a bunch of custom metal work on here. It looks like it's got a scalar fab front bumper. It's got some looks like modified scalar fab sliders. These appear to be the standard scalar fab sliders that it looks like maybe Matt added the additional hoops on, or maybe he had scalar fab do it, I'm not sure. It looks more like MIG welds than it does brazing, and Matt, I believe, typically does brazing. So, um, we'll s so possibly scalar fab did that for him. The other thing is, is that it's got this custom bed mounted roll bar setup. With that bed mounted roll bar though, we start to get into some of the other things that this has, including it's got a, looks like gear head rear light bar, which has got the red lights on the outside and amber in the center. It's got a spare tire mount, which I saw a minute ago when I removed that spare tire to get that bag of extras out of there. Now that is all possible in the bed of this thing because it's got a 3D printed night customs 
drop bed in it, which is a huge piece, super nice to have. Uh, there's a scale high lift jack in there, a scale jerry can, and like a some sort of like pro-line duffel bag thing. I haven't necessarily seen that before, but there we have it. And another goodie sticking out of that drop bed is a set of uh, Vanquish shock towers. The rear bumper looks like it must be uh, an all custom piece by Matt. It's a steel bumper, follows the bed nicely, it's fully plated, and it's got a couple of little exhaust tips hanging below it there that go into the stock bumper mounts. <laughs> Underneath <laughs> Underneath the bed here, Matt has left me a little gift which <laughs> says built by Matthew Kett, April 2017, Josh smells. <laughs> that's stain for sure continuing to look underneath we've got a better view of that vanquish rear curry rock jock with the red diff cover we have some lights going to the rear corners where this thing does have tail lights pre-wired in with light buckets made for it. Not sure if these are also a Knight Customs piece or just a piece that you can like download from his My Mini Factory. The graphics on the outside of this are a wrap done by Freaky Skins to look like a weathered Toyota with kind of an Ivan Stewart style uh, paint job. It's got SBG on the roof, Toyota, Axial, Proline, Knight Customs. A uh, cilantro rear license plate. Where does he come up with this stuff? A when in doubt, hit the gas bumper sticker. On that front axle, we do have brass knuckles and it looks like I can see some faint branding on the side here. And I believe that these are hot racing. It does have front universal shafts, which look to be stock axial, which likely means that uh, based on the kit transmission as well, this likely has the machined ring gear and pinion, which is nice. All of the metal on this truck, uh, the front bumper sliders, rear cage, rear you know bumper are all rusty, but I think that with the weathered look of the body, that was the goal. Probably not something I'm gonna change. I think it looks pretty fitting. That front bumper does have a two inch Vanquish light bar mounted to it as well. And just above that light bar and bumper, we do see a 3D printed Night Customs grill with the Toyota badge on it, the headlights and marker lights all previously installed. And then the hood is pre-cut. And how is this open? Do I just pull? Is it magnets? Open. How do you open this thing? All right, let's just try and take the body off and see if we can see it. I don't want to just yank on this thing because it's got so many of the 3D printed upgrades that I really don't want to break them by just pulling it off. Oh, you have to fold it up and over. Underneath the hood is a nicely detailed Knight Customs engine bay setup with the Toyota motor and it's all painted nicely. It all looks very nice. Inside of the body we have, uh, well, it's not a bomber interior. I'm not sure which interior this is. I thought he said bomber, but that definitely is not bomber. Um, might be a Yeti actually, cut down or something along those lines. Either way, it looks like it's fairly well painted up. It's missing the driver head. It has the passenger head. Um, it's got a cheeseburger with no bun on the dash. Maybe he's going for the low carb diet. There's a bag of hurricane cat chow in the interior. I'm guessing that's some sort of Simpsons joke. And that little uh, jerry can in the bed actually says blinker fluid and has a very nice scale style strap around it. Now, while I have gotten under the hood, 
uh, it does not answer the question exactly of how you're supposed to remove this body, but I think we'll probably leave that for a later time. At this point, at least, I can tell that it's a solid truck, even if Matt built it. The good news is that I got my hands on it before anyone else, so we can fix anything that's wrong, and that way Matt can still maintain his positive perception of being a quality builder. Okay, but now to get into the details of where we're at with this build. Now, the last flip that truck I sold for $425, and this truck I bought for $425. Now that is a really good deal based on the fact that it does have Vanquish Curries and all of the 3D printed stuff, a custom wrap, a bunch of custom metal work. But also at the same time, what it doesn't have is it doesn't have wheels and tires, it doesn't have a transmission, a servo, an ESC. So before I'm anywhere near being able to get this thing completed, we're gonna have to reinvest back into this fairly significantly. Now the spare tire that was in the bed of this is the stock BFG all trains from the SCX 10 2 kit. What one of my goals may be is to find a takeoff set of these tires from the SCX 10 2 kit in very good condition. That way I can match the spare and I should be able to find those tires fairly easily. As most people tend to want to change out the stock tires, even though these were really good stock tires. So I may try and find a set of those hopefully locally, maybe so I don't have to pay shipping, or I'll search the Facebook forums to see if I can find a deal there. Since I have a transmission from a previous Flip That Truck project, I can just drop that one in there and that cost doesn't have to get added since we got it out of a previous vehicle. I'm not using other parts I have around the shop to put into these builds for the reason that I'm trying to keep some sort of rolling tally. For the motor and the third Flip That Truck project in a row, I'm gonna use one of the Holmes Hobbies Trailmaster Sports. Super affordable, super reliable, high quality sealed can motor at a really just easy price. That's gonna allow me to get the transmission and motor in there. For ESC, I'll probably try and find something like a used 1080 ESC, possibly new if I have to. And then for the servo, I'm gonna just bargain shop a little bit, maybe pick up something even as inexpensive as like one of the JX servos. And then from there, just trying to do a basic cleanup sort out any things that I think may need sorted. There's a lot of wiring going on underneath this body with all of the LEDs that appear to be installed. But for right now, it's just kind of all hanging. Just in the interest of being thorough, I'll probably open up those axles, make sure everything looks good in there, everything's well greased and bearings are in good shape. I'll probably choose to pull off these hot racing brass knuckles, prep them and then shoot them in a black paint just to hide the brass look itself. The performance of them will be fine, but I don't want the look. I'll grab one of the Axial driver helmets and put it on the driver's seat, even though Matt's got one all nicely painted up on this side, not so much for the driver's side, so we'll add something there. I guess the biggest question is, do we take off and prep and seal paint all of this metal work, including the bumper, the sliders, the rear bumper, the roll cage. You know, do we go through that effort and clean it up and paint it and then maybe not have it match the you know, rust bucket look of the external graphics? I, I get where he was going, the reason that he left it bare. Obviously, you can't leave things like this bare in Canada and have them you know, stay in good condition like here in California. I think that was the look that he was going for and I don't disagree with it. Let's take a rundown through that simple little grading system that I put together at the beginning of this series and compare this truck with the previous versions. Now, the first category was quality. Quality of the parts, quality of the build, the whole thing. Now, it's got Vanquish axles under it, Vanquish shock towers, nice 3D printed Night Customs grill and bed, engine bay, it's got rubberized mirrors, everything. Now the Night Customs inner fenders do have a couple of cracks from just, you know, being used and, and things along those lines. But overall, I think that the quality of this thing is still really good, obviously. I think overall the best that we've seen yet. Granted, it comes from the highest price tag that we've seen yet as well. I think I comfortably say a nine for this truck. However, it also isn't complete, you know, not even a transmission, the wheels, tires. So maybe we'll just say an eight, even though, you know, the quality of the parts that are there are fantastic, but it's just, there's things missing. The next one is age and generation. This is still Axial's most current vehicle. Granted, it's not the most current release on the market, but it's 
all things that are still very viable in the market today. But being that the Axio SCX10 II has been on the market for quite a while, I think that will give this thing an eight again. The next category is finish. Now being that the truck isn't finished, no tires or wheels, transmission, and then the actual parts that are in it aren't finished either. They're not even painted, all rusty and stuff. Still, it was the look he was going for. It completes well. It was all actually still done pretty well, even though I can't figure out how to get the body off yet. But I'll give him an eight again. Then we have durability and practicality. Practicality. How do you get the gun body off? Do you just leave the battery in it? How do you get... I'm dinging him on practicality for sure. Durability wise, the axles are built with, you know, it looks like the SCX10 kit version parts, which were the nicer version of the parts. It's got aftermarket housings on it that are quality. Stock drive shafts, but the stock drive shafts were always good. Uh, incision shocks, no transmission again. So that's gonna go to part of durability. I So I'd go with an eight, but being the parts that are missing, we'll drop it down to a seven. Then we get to resale. Now I'm gonna say resale as in how I got it because it's not usually as easy to sell incomplete vehicles. Resale usually suffers quite a bit, but this one was built by Matt and granted, I'm not trying to take that same part in on my side or when I build things. Being that it's going to carry Matt's reputation as well, it may add a couple what is it, loonies or toonies? So you total all of that up and you absolutely do end with the highest value that we've seen as a starting point for one of these projects yet. But that's how it should go and how I hope for this series to continue. As I had said at the very beginning, my goal was to start with a fairly inexpensive vehicle and work my way up to something that at the end, I was happy to keep in the stable myself. This one's not it, sorry Matt, but I've got gr delusions of grandeur. And again, yes, Matt and I are friends, but he's not trying to just give me something for my YouTube series. It's just not the way it works. I paid him for it. He wanted money. I had money. In the end, we negotiated a price, came to a deal, and now I own his truck. He's the one who even actually brought it up like, hey, I have a truck. You should buy this one. So look forward to more videos on this truck. It's one that I definitely hope to turn quickly. If you guys have thoughts or ideas on things that I should get done to this truck quickly and inexpensively, absolutely drop those in the comments below. But before you go, if you enjoy the Flip That Truck series, make sure and hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.